Welcome back to the program. I'm Roby Brock, joined by Maureen Glisovic, KATV's Capital Reporter. This session, she's been just a little bit busy. Just a little yeah. bit. You would think so, right? Thank you for working your way in here towards the end of the week, ahead of the next week. Let's begin with some of the big stuff that you've been following this past couple of weeks, but in particular, it erupted this past week, the state flag debate. We got four stars on the state flag. Some wanted to have no symbolism, some wanted to have certain symbolism. What have you been covering? Okay, so earlier this week, so we had Representative Charles Blake who ran his bill, House Bill 1736. He had bipartisan co-sponsors, you know, effort, support. Uh, what he wanted to change was the, flat, uh, the star above the word Arkansas to have it represent the United States of America and take away that association of Confederate States of America. Then one of the three on the bottom of the word Arkansas would have represented Native American nations. Now we had quite a few uh, folks speaking out against that. It lasted about an hour and a half or so, um, just talking about what they thought should represent the flag. They wanted to keep the Confederacy. You had the Sons of Confederate Veterans there who were very vocal. It was pretty heated debate. And then at the end of the day, um, you know, they actually it didn't pass out of committee. And Representative Douglas House actually mentioned that, you know, one reason and one reason only he was voting against the bill was because it was telling people what to think. And he's tired of telling people what to think. So um, hours later, he actually filed his own bill, House Bill 1895, to just strip the symbolism of all four stars. So the governor's not in favor of stripping all the symbolism, though. No, he does believe that it should represent something just like the United States flag represents something. So, you know, while he appreciates the effort of taking away the Confederacy Association, he wants to accomplish that goal in some other way. Yeah, well, what do you, what's your assessment? you think we will have a resolution to this debate in this legislative session? Do you think it's something that's going to have to kick around and uh, build some more consensus for? I think that it may have to be kicked around, although Representative Blake did mention that he was speaking to some senators, you know, on the Senate side, and we could end up seeing another flag bill filed on the Senate side, so. All right, we will wait and see where that goes. All right, let's talk about specifically hog farms. We're going to talk about animal waste in general, one of the lovelier topics that you get to cover and that uh, we get to discuss here. That basically, there has been a push to change the permitting process from the Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality to the Arkansas Natural Resources Commission. Some folks think this is an underhanded way of getting around some of the EPA and ADEQ standards that are out there specifically related to a hog farm up in the Buffalo River Basin. Exactly. And so actually, you know, Central Arkansas Water has come out against it. You know, while they're not near the Buffalo, they're also concerned for their drinking water. They serve 450,000 Arkansans. So their, you know, their concerns are, you know, is it going to relax some of the regulations? Is the Natural Resources Commission going to actually adopt everything ADEQ does, their standards, protocols? There's nothing in the bill guaranteeing that. It actually allows, you know, Natural Resources Commission to come up with their own protocols and rules, um, you know, the Arkansas Farm Bureau is pushing for this. They're saying it's going to make the permit permitting process easier for farmers. They currently have to go see both state entities for different documentations. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of their push for it. And the EPA came out with voicing some concerns and a little bit of, I wouldn't say it's unprecedented because it has probably happened before, but it is very irregular that you would see that kind of advance warning from the EPA. Exactly, and they were warning, you know, ADEQ that, hey, we are taking a look at this, we're looking at it closely, and actually mentioned that if they were to adopt this as law, that they would actually still have to go through EPA to make sure that it's complying with the Clean Water Act. All right, we'll keep our eye on that one. It's where it's just sitting in committee right now. Well, it did get out of committee. It did get out of yeah, the right. Senate, yeah. and so, so right now it, it should be down in the House. There's no planned, you know, thing on the schedule right now, okay. but... That one definitely is halfway through. We'll see where that goes. All right. State Senate President Jim Hendren introduced a bill and got it through both the Senate committee and the Senate chamber. It's down in the House now for a um, additional taxes on vaping, e-cigarettes, combined with a tax break for lower income and middle income Arkansans. There is another, I think, e-cigarette tax bill that's out there too. But this has become a public health issue. It's also become a way to raise some money. Exactly. I, I understand that, you know, for, with Hendren's push for it, you know, a lot of them mentioned that, you know, why should we be paying for those who choose to smoke cigarettes and things along those lines and their health complications? Um, you know, the other bill they're trying to do is tax the liquids that um, e-vape users use. And so with the e-cigs, that's a concern for some of the vaping shops who say they're mom-and-pop shops 
putting a 30% tax increase on just the liquid would just completely kill their businesses. Yeah, is what they, they still say. they pay the six and a half percent sales tax. Yes, but this would be an additional. This would tax be an on additional on just the liquid part. So, and the way that one uh, vape shop put it to me was that if they have a hundred thousand dollars in inventory, right off the bat, they'd have to ch cut a check for thirty thousand dollars and then put that on to the consumer. Yeah, a real uh, small business concern there also a public health concern. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, these are the things they get to debate up there at the state capitol. Uh, and then also with the earned income tax credit and some tax reform on the lower income side, that's part of Senator Henry's bill. It got through the Senate on an 18 to 14 vote, which 18 is the minimum number of votes to get through. That would portend or suggest that in the House side, it's got a pretty steep uphill battle. Exactly. And what I did think was interesting is some of these bills that have been brought up into committees, um, we haven't had anybody speaking out against taxing cigarettes. And uh, I've wondered that with the tobacco industry and things along those lines. I so. think they're working silently behind the scenes <laughs> is how that works uh, for those who don't know. So, all right, what to watch for in uh, the next week, maybe the next two weeks. Number one, the budget process, the Revenue Stabilization Act, which is the big budget bill that puts the priorities on everything. That's going to get rolling this next week, that's a good sign because that means they're starting to wind down their business. Exactly, you know, I mean, they still don't have an ending date for filing bills, right? No, they don't, yeah. Yeah, and that's just something that I've been looking out for. <laughs> uh, you're tired of looking it up and yes. hitting refresh all the time. Yes. Uh, also, too, the legislature will refer up to three ballot proposals. Let's talk about what's under consideration. The highway uh, half-cent sales tax extension, making that permanent as part of the governor's highway program, is already through. I think it's cleared both chambers. So it's a done deal to be on the ballot in 2020. What else is out there? So I'm thinking, I mean, they're gonna put something with term limits. I understand that there's already a resolution out there to put that on there and just um, changing the way and how long they can serve. I believe it's 12 years, right. then they'd have to take a four year break and then they could come, come back, back for 12 it. years and do another break. And I mean, at that point, it sounds like it's just, there is no term limit, right? There's a term break. Is there we <laughs> go. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that has riled the term limits opponent, I mean, the, the supporters of term limits, who I think are still planning on coming with a ballot initiative. There could be, if that one gets referred out, there could be two, a citizen's initiative and a legislative referred term limits proposal with the same ballot title. Oh. and two different complete things that they do. Um, it anyhow, sounds like it's confusion for voters. It will be right? confusion for voters. We'll see if that one sticks. I think the other, th there could be a third proposal referred, and right now I think there is a debate going on between a watered-down tort reform bill or revising the ballot initiative process. What I understand, so the ballot initiative process, I understand um, there has been something that's already gone through where it just completely changes it. The attorney general is no longer involved with it. Um, I understand that the folks who do these ballot initiatives, a lot of the people who worked on getting medical marijuana onto the ballot, um, casino amendment, those type of things that voters minimum have, wage. minimum wage, mm -hmm. those are the type of things that citizens have brought to voters and the process has completely changed if you will and um, I know that's a big concern for the people who campaign on those who've yeah. been doing this for years. Higher threshold for signature collection and I do think it is wise to move up the dates of all the collections. We have dealt so much with the um, Supreme Court kicking them off the ballot when the yes. ballot's already printed. This is an attempt to resolve that but there are some hidden gems mm -hmm. in that bill too that uh, like you said some of the supporters of some of these ballot initiatives are not going to like. Exactly. All right she's Maureen Glisevich. She covers the Capitol for KATV. You can catch her on KATV and you can catch her at KATV.com. Thank you. Thanks so much Roby. Always good. And thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Roby Brock. That's all for today's program. Have a busy and a productive week. We'll see you next time.